Zero. So are you still masquerading as one of us? We'll discover who you are shortly. Are you going to kill me? Or control me with your Gias? You made me think, Cornelia. Insolent Wars? <laughs> well, Cornelia is here! Is there no one who will challenge me? You ordered me to destroy them all, but killing a member of the Britannian royal family was just... Forget it. Now, join us for your welcome soiree. You... I have you right where I want you. Your life is now in my hands! This is your judgment! You're wrong. Peace attained by force is not peace. My brother didn't kill me. I'm still here after all is said and done. Has this ever happened to you? You just started watching an anime for the first time. The series turns out to be awesome with an amazing plot and interesting characters. One of which you start becoming invested in. And as the season comes to an end, you start to wonder how their arc will continue in the next season. You have experienced the character's major impact on the story and figure it'll only improve. But then the next season comes, which shatters those hopes by doing the opposite. The writers reduce their roles, making them almost irrelevant, the opposite of what happened in the last season. At times, it feels like the characters don't even exist, or worse, the climax of the character's arc wasn't satisfying. It almost feels like a betrayal. And that's exactly what happened to Cornelia Lee Britannia from Code Geass. She was one of my favorite characters in the series, and the way the writers ruined her in Season 2 was an absolute crime. How do you take an interesting character with a large role in the story? and render them as a side fan service character. Well, leave it to the writers of Code Geass to do exactly that. The situation was so bad, they had to include supplemental material to explain what happened to Cornelia during the events of Season 2, which wasn't satisfactory at all, and more importantly, should have been included in the original anime. But no, we can't have that. Instead, we need to see more of Valetta and Colin's assets, and who can forget about the good old-fashioned seduction club, or that soft reboot to start season 2. Let me explain exactly how they ruined Cornelia almost as badly as they ruined Shirley. In the first season of Code Geass, Cornelia was a badass general leading the Britannian forces against the Black Knights. She was brutal and brilliant in her no-nonsense approach to handling Zero's forces. Besides being a badass general, she was also a badass Nightmare Frame pilot with the skills to even take out Lelouch in the Gwaine despite her Nightmare Frame being significantly weaker. In fact, besides Colin, it always took several Nightmare Frame pilots to take out Cornelia, which is more of a testament to her impressive skills. Cornelia wasn't all business though, as she had a soft spot for Euphemia, her younger sister, someone who she was a bit too overprotective of. But most of the time, her heart was in the right place, even though she didn't seem to care too much about what Euphemia actually wanted. She was motivated by vengeance for the deaths of Clovis, Lelouch, and Nunnally. It was the accepted narrative at the time that Lelouch and Nunnally died in Japan during Britannia's invasion. Also, Cornelia looked into Marion's death since she greatly respected her. So it was clear Cornelia had several facets that made her an interesting character. After Clovis told Lelouch that Cornelia would have more information about what happened to Marion, Lelouch then devotes much of his time to capturing her, with the idea that when that happens, just like Clovis, he will use his Gias on her to learn the truth. And that day would finally come to Towards the end of season one, Lelouch used Gias on Dalton to deliver Cornelia into his hands, and that's exactly what he did. Now, the destruction of her nightmare frame was intense, where Cornelia broke her arm, which is visibly shown to us by how she holds it. Despite what Clovis said, Lelouch was dissatisfied by Cornelia's answers under his Gias. Still, he was going to take her prisoner, something that Jeremiah prevents. Lelouch instead deals with him, and Suzaku later on checks on Cornelia once he received communication from her. This would be her last scene in Season 1. Cornelia at this point had several potential side plots going forward into Season 2. You have the side plot of seeking revenge against Zero for the death of Euphemia, where she would make up for her past mistakes. She could also learn the truth about what her father was up to involving Gias. 
her romance with Guilford, and maybe in an interesting plot twist, she works with Felouche instead of fighting against him. And there's more where that came from. So you would think with everything we've discussed concerning Cornelia, that she would have a much larger role in season two. Well, you'd be wrong. Season 2 starts off by forgetting that Cornelia even exists. Only Guilford seems to notice that Cornelia has gone missing, or at least comments on it. That doesn't make any sense. Considering who Cornelia is, you would think that someone would be asking questions about her whereabouts besides Guilford, but I guess not. The situation is so bad that Cornelia doesn't even show up until episode 12, which is basically halfway through the second season. Are you kidding me right now? Somehow we live in a world where Valletta, a side character, gets more screen time than Cornelia, the main antagonist of the last season. But you know what? Maybe her role at least will be great. Perhaps it was worth the wait. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. Cornelia shows up at the Gias Order wearing the most insulting outfit in the series. We'll get to that crap later. Right now, I'm confused how Cornelia knows where the Order is or when she learned about Gias. Sure, she heard Zaku say it before he left in season 1, but how can you take that as proof of anything? Cornelia has no knowledge that supernatural powers could exist, so why would Suzaku referencing some random word make any sense to her? Because the writers rushed the season, we can't even get scenes where any of this happens. Also, when Cornelia is first shown at the Gias Order, she states that she is going to bring out the Gias Order from the shadows to prove Yuffie's innocence. We'll get to this stupidity in just a bit. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, first, Cornelia runs into Bartley, who explained that her father is trying to kill God. This leads to nothing because Cornelia doesn't believe it, yet she believes in Gias. Okay, while talking with Bartley, she meets V2, who surprised her with his immortality. The next time we see Cornelia, she appeared in a holding room. Wait, wait, what? How? What the hell happened? Did she just surrender for the hell of it? Did they threaten her with guns? Oh wait, this is the Gias Order. They don't have weapons. So how in the fuck? Did they manage to capture her? She clearly took out several members on her way with just one arm. By the way, that's quite impressive, but it also brings up an obvious issue that no one could have taken her out in hand-to-hand -hand combat. They couldn't show a scene of her capture? What's even going on right now? But don't worry, things are only going to get worse. Cornelia asked V2 if he plans to use Gias on her, just like he did with Yuffie. Instead of answering this question, V2 explains that Cornelia gave up everything to prove of Euphemia's innocence, and that somehow led her here. There are so many problems here. First of all, V2 had nothing to do with Euphemia. Lelouch gave her the order, and he got his Gias from C2. Did Cornelia not understand this? I guess the bigger question is, why did Cornelia think that V2 was involved to begin with? She seemed surprised when meeting him at the Gias order, so that was probably the first time. She also didn't tell Bartley about V2. Heck, she even says this during their final battle against V2. So your name is V2. Clearly, she wasn't aware of who V2 was before going to the Gias Order. Here's the problem. There is so much missing information, including what Cornelia knows about Gias, why she assumed a random person over zero used Gias on Euphemia, why she went alone to the Order instead of bringing backup. I'm sure Guilford would have joined her. And more importantly, how and when did she learn about any of this? It's such a mess, and that's just the first complaint here. Second, how are you going to prove Euphemia's innocence when there is literal footage that Detard spread throughout the net showing Euphemia's actions? No matter what evidence you have, you're not going to convince people any differently than what happened. But let's entertain this idea. Let's say you get evidence that Gias is a thing, and this organization is responsible for it. What's the plan then? You're going to show everyone the proof of Gias, a supernatural power? Arrest the heads and put them on trial? How would any of that work? Are you going to head back to Britannia and gather forces to invade the Order? 
Didn't Cornelia give up everything to do this? She doesn't have any authority anymore, so good luck with that. Also, keep in mind, no one's going to believe any of this nonsense. Even Detar discussed this idea, which is so ironic on so many levels. But even showing Gias wouldn't prove anything, because you also have to prove that someone used it on her. And there's no footage of that. It feels like the writer's plan for Cornelia felt rushed and not thought out, probably because it was rushed and not thought out. And third, why does Cornelia even think that Euphemia was under mind control this whole time? She doesn't know Gias exists, and while it's odd that Euphemia acted that way, it's even more odd to assume it was due to supernatural powers and not anything else like stress or a conspiracy. Who knows? But the pain is only beginning, my friends. Cornelia unknowingly works with Felouche to take out V2. She again states this is revenge for what he did to Yuffie. This again makes Makes no sense since it's never explained how she knows this. Also, she's not destroying the source of Gias by removing the order. C2 can still give out contracts and Gias existed long before C2. The show never said where Gias came from, so both Lelouch and Cornelia were dumb in assuming that destroying the order would be the end of things. Before V2 Siegfried crashes into Cornelia, Jeremiah saves her life, then takes her captive, making this the second time in like three episodes that this happened. Way to treat your badass character. After the incident involving Lelouch, C2, and Charles in C's world, Lelouch learns that Jeremiah took Cornelia captive. Just so you know, it's the only time these two share a conversation in the entire season. The one person that Lelouch desperately went after is now just an afterthought, even though he could ask her literally anything. And the conversation was terrible in general. Cornelia asks Lelouch if he's dirty himself with that power, and Lelouch says he's doing it for Nunnally, and then Cornelia responds with, how dare you? I kid you not, that is the entire conversation between these two. Let's break down how stupid this is. The writers essentially committed character assassination of Lelouch in this scene. Lelouch has always been a character who persistently asks questions to learn the truth. Yet in this one scene, he has absolutely no follow-up questions to Cornelia about anything. Don't you think it's odd she found out about the Gias order on her own? when you had to conquer China and needed Rollo and Jeremiah's help to locate it? Don't you think it's odd she knows about Gias to begin with? Are the writers really suggesting that Lelouch doesn't have any more questions about Marianne? This complaint about Gias is far from a nitpick because, remember, Lelouch said he wanted to wipe out the order so no one else could use Gias. But if Cornelia learned about Gias and found out about the order's location, then maybe someone outside the order told her about it. If that's true, then there could be other and mortals or at least other Gias users to worry about, which we learned in Oz that reflection did exist, which was Orpheus. And lucky for Lelouch, Orpheus doesn't get involved in his plan. So by not asking any questions, Lelouch is essentially acting like some sort of an idiot, completely ruining his character so the plot can plot. The writers basically ruined two awesome characters in literal seconds because they didn't actually have an explanation for why Cornelia learned all this information and had to supplement it later on with a manga and then even more things beyond that. Unbelievable. Continuing on, during the Battle of Tokyo 2, Cornelia breaks free from her room and later unites with Schneisel on top of the Ikaruga following the destruction of the Tokyo settlement. That scene was terrible, but I'll say that for my turn 19 video, which also includes how they ruined her character during the entire meeting between the Black Knights and Schneisel. In turn 20, Cornelia emerges on the Avalon and everyone is excited to see her again. At least Lloyd is. This is kind of odd since no one asked asked about her before then, but whatever, it's fine. During this scene, it becomes clear that the writers want her to be a pointless, fan service character. I said before that outfit was insulting, and we had a few moments before to prove this, but now you see it in full view. The outfit is so tight, you can literally see her butt crack and other lovely parts. Why would someone as dignified as Cornelia dress in this manner? She was one of the several female characters in the first season that seemed immune to fan service, but hey, I was clearly wrong. Sure, her first outfit showed off some curves, but it was respectful and awesome. This just looks like someone painted it on her. I can't imagine, given how blessed Cornelia is, that the lack of support must feel great on her back. 
Yes, I know she's probably wearing a sports bra, but still, this outfit sucks. And it would have been nice to see Cornelia go through the process of where she changed this outfit, got the arm sling, and went on this journey. Just saying. Anyways, Cornelia then decides to work with Schneizo as part of the coup d'etat against Charles. This is odd since we learned early on that she supported her father's policies. Of course, if they had a one-on-one -on -one conversation that might facilitate this, that wouldn't have hurt either, but whatever. I think this might have been related to what she learned earlier with what Barley told her, but it's not confirmed. After Schneizel destroys Pendragon, Cornelia figured out something was up and asked to talk to Schneizel privately. She knew he lied that the city was evacuated before he fired the flea. Schneizel then tells her the truth that he actually killed everyone in Pendragon, and he also revealed his grand plan to control the world with Fleas. Cornelia is immediately upset by this and pushes back that this would be controlling people with fear and that peace obtained by force is not real peace. What is going on right now? Cornelia supported the Britannian rules of oppressing the other areas up to this point. She has no issue with killing innocent people to secure an area. But all of a sudden, because Schneider is doing it on a much grander scale, that she's not happy with it? Was there supposed to be, um, an arc here? Because there wasn't one. Instead, she just changed for the plot. Why? A good story has a character gradually grow and change throughout a story, so when they act differently from where they started, it makes sense to the audience. Does Cornelia go through this? No. How could she when we didn't see this character until episode 12 and for four episodes she was basically someone's prisoner? They threw her in here because why not? Forget about having a nice redemption story where Cornelia works with Velouche. Instead, we get this rush nonsense. And of course, it doesn't matter how Cornelia feels because Schneider has automatic turrets fire at her. This leads to Cornelia for the third time in this season to be rendered useless in the story. What was the point of having her in the first place? I mean, besides the obvious. Oh yeah! Cornelia remains in the hospital bed while Lelouch takes over the world. At least she reunited with her lover, Guilford. That's something, I guess. She then appears in the last episode, leading a resistant group consisting of a pregnant woman and possibly a blind man. I can't make this up. There are some theories that she might have actually been aware of Lelouch's plans, but that's never been substantiated. So instead, I'm going to assume that her plan was to attack Lelouch while he passes through. How the heck was that going to work? Who knows? And thanks to the plot, we don't have to find out. Adding insult to injury, Cornelia isn't even with Schneisel when Nully and Ogi meet during the epilogue. I mean, she is also a member of the royal family and should totally be there, right? I guess not. Yes, I realize she gave up her claim to the throne, but that shouldn't matter here. Cornelia's last appearance comes in a picture from Ogie and Valletta's wedding. Great. A bunch of minor characters got individual scenes in the epilogue, but Cornelia gets nothing. But you know what? That makes perfect sense to me. After all, Cornelia's role in this season was pointless. She never cleared Yuffie's name. She spent most of the season off screen, in captivity, or in a hospital, goes to the most convenient character change ever. Every action she takes is pointless as the conflicts were resolved without her, including clearing Yuffie's name. No one cares that she's gone except for Guilford. Lelouch barely even talks to her. She doesn't get to find a nightmare frame. And don't tell me you didn't want to see the Quinn Rose Model Z in this season and not in Resurrection. And to top it all off, they gave her that insulting outfit to wear for the entire season. They stripped Cornelia of what made her an amazing character so they could shove her into the season without putting any thought into it. I was at least happy she got a bigger role in Resurrection, which kind of serves as an apology. But if this was their plan for her from the beginning, or at least when they started writing R2, then they should have just killed her off in the first season. Because what they gave us here was complete garbage. These writers can piss off as they drop the ball in this season. Cornelia deserved better, and you know who also deserved better, surely. And you can find that out by watching this video right here.